Welcome everyone. Please be seated. The church throughout the world, as you already well know, is going through this wonderful chapter six of the Gospel of John. And today we have the second of our five episodes from that chapter. If you were here last week, or if you're a registered parishioner and you saw my letter, you knew about this commentary and the outline of the commentary and how it is that I will have these homilies, the uh, pastor's columns in the bulletin, as well as um, the, just the masses themselves, all these five weeks based on the theme of the bread of life. Jesus today calls himself the bread of life. All because of Jesus having mul multiplied the loaves, as we heard last week, and now today, he literally, clearly identifies himself as the bread of life. Last Sunday, you heard me speak about the Catholic belief in the real presence of Jesus in the Eucharist and transubstantiation, how and why it is that Jesus can be the bread of life, that he could possibly give us his flesh to eat and his blood to drink, and that what our senses tell us is bread and wine is actually the body and blood of Christ. Miraculously, mysteriously so. He willed it to be such. If by chance you missed last week's commentary and homily, please just go online to, to our webpage and you can watch those videos. So this five-week commentary on the Mass is in the year, is, it's in the context of these three years that we have entitled the Years of the Eucharist. It's on the heels of the National Eucharistic Congress, the first one that we have had in the United States for over 80 years. This commentary has one goal. The more we know and understand about what it is we do and why it is we do it here in the context of Mass, the more enhanced our appreciation and hopefully our participation at Mass will be. Our worship of God will be. I will explain the different parts of the Mass, what we do and why we do it from the processional hymn all the way to our walking out behind the processional cross at the end of Mass. Last week I mentioned that we are asked to be here for the entirety of Mass. Mass forms one act of worship. There's no such thing as participating in three-fourths of the Mass, where we come in and we, we miss the whole introduction and the forgiveness of sins. Or that we participate in seven-eighths of the Mass, that we receive Holy Communion, and, and literally, as we are receiving Holy Communion, we proceed out without the final blessing and the final prayers. The Mass is one act of worship, complete, total act, from that opening hymn, as I said a moment ago, to us following out behind the cross of Christ back into the world. This is the same Mass as it has been since the first and second centuries. The divisions of the Mass are the same. I mentioned that last week. Today I will talk about the introductory rites. Next week I'll talk about the Liturgy of the Word. The following week, the Liturgy of the Eucharist. And then the final week, the concluding rites of the Mass. Including our gestures, our posture, and also our etiquette at Mass. Today, introductory rites. We've already sung the opening hymn. Did you realize that the opening hymn is part of Mass? It's in the big red book on the altar, the Roman Missal. It talks about the role of the opening hymn. We all arrive here as individuals. That opening hymn has us together with one voice singing a common hymn. We're now together, joining together as a family of faith. We're singing that hymn, a hymn that has been chosen because of some theme or image or the, 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 the mood of the Mass that we have on that particular day. The words have been chosen. 
very specifically from the Bible. The words are biblical. And so the very first part already has our mind preparing itself for the rest of the Mass. It's very purposeful. And so, yes, it should go without saying that you really are asked to sing the opening hymn and to pray those words, getting yourself ready for the word, the, the liturgy of the word. And the hymn is also helping everyone. But we're all singing this together. It's part of the Mass. It's not to be ignored. And we don't simply listen, we sing. When the priest comes in, arrives, he genuflects towards the tabernacle. The Lord is present here. His real presence, his body and blood, the bread of life are here. So we genuflect. We bend the, the knee as we read in places of, sac of sacred scripture. We do exactly what the Bible mentions. The priest then kisses the altar. I'm sure you've noticed that gesture before. Why? Well, the altar represents Jesus. He is the sacrifice. This is the place of sacrifice. Jesus, as I mentioned last week, has not somehow, it's not like we gather together as a whole bunch of individuals and now invite God to join us. He's not the guest, he's the host. He has summoned us. He has called us, invited us to this act of worship. So the priest reverences the altar, kisses the altar. In fact, there's a prayer that the priest says at the same time, praying through the intercession of the saint whose relic is here and through all and the intercession of all the saints that my sins are forgiven. That's what the priest is praying. Before I even begin the celebration of the Mass, I'm asking God to forgive me my sins so that I can best lead everyone in this common act of worship. Then we have the sign of the cross. I've already spoken about the sign of the cross a couple of months ago, our shortest prayer that we have, a most meaningful symbol to us. And then we have the greeting from the priest. It could be something so simple as, the Lord be with you, which, by the way, is biblical. Or it might be, the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. That's a direct quote from St. Paul when he greets the people whom he is writing one of his letters to. So there is a greeting, a formal greeting that takes place. And then the priest helps us to call to mind our sins and to ask for mercy. We need our minds and our hearts and our souls purified, ready to participate in Mass. So I really hope you're following the logic of the introductory rites. I'll speak a little bit more about them as we go on in the context of Mass. 